Hello, Yvonne. Hi, Hero. Welcome to your session. First of all, I like your outfit, you know. Thank you. It's giving class, it's giving boss, it's giving... That was the purpose, that was the aim, for us to give. <laughs> <laughs> it's giving that, yo, man, Thank classy, you. never trashy. That's an Instagram caption I stole from somewhere. I've taken notes. <laughs> classy, never trashy, <laughs> no, you'll see it soon. It. It's over you. I will use it. <laughs> Very cool stuff. Um, it's good to see that you're back. How does it feel being back to real life? feels good. I couldn't wait to be back. I mean, even if it's something I looked forward to going into the house, being there was just different. Living with a lot of people. Something I've not done since I was in boarding house now. It's been a while. So, like, it was a lot for me, but I'm happy I pushed through. All right. So, would you say you've seen um, a significant change? Oh, yes. Now that you're out of the house. So yes. What are those changes, really? Uh... The first change is I've learned to trust myself. I'm someone that like battled with self-doubt a lot before I got into the house. And now I know I can do it. Now I can trust myself. Now those voices in my head will not tell me anything. I know that I can do anything I put my mind to. So yeah. And I'm more confident in myself. I have this thing of, you know, I dress up. No, 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 no I'm shy. I'm mm. a very shy girl. But now just more confident and I believe more in myself. No. That's good. That's good. That's a beautiful thing the show has done. Yeah. Um, and now you, you have fans. Who would have thought? <laughs> like you have fans. I would have loved me. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing. So what has been the, the biggest misconception? I know uh, you get more love than hate though. Yeah, I just realized that. Yeah. Uh, that I'm proud. I'm not proud. No, I just it's proud. it's no I'm not proud. Someone like me, yeah, I it takes time for me to like warm up to people. And when I do and I get real comfortable, I become really annoying. So that little time that I take is like, oh she's for me. This one, that one, that one. But I'm not for me, I'm just taking my time. That's what I'm saying. You should be proud. I don't think pride is a bad thing. I think excess. But I'm not proud. I don't have it's pride. It's a bad thing. I know, but I'm just not that person. You know, there's a thin line between confidence. Okay. And, and what is arrogance. And you're not arrogant. No, I'm not. Like, you understand what I'm saying? Mm. So when people say, I know it's a Nigerian thing to say. Mm. That one, she too, they feel herself. Mm. That one, she too but proud. That one, same deal. I like to feel myself. I like to feel myself. Because sometimes if you don't blow your trumpet, who will? If you don't, if you're not confident, confidence is something that, it's an energy that transfers. Mm. It's, you walk into, let's say, you're trying to get um, a job. If you don't deliver your proposal with confidence, if mm. you're trying to fake some sort of humility and you don't deliver it, mm. the clients won't even trust you mm. enough to deliver the job. So I'm just saying. Um, True. I don't think you should ever watch yourself at any point. I don't want to act as if I don't want to I want to I want to force humility. Humility is not an act. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. You get what you're saying. Cool stuff. Um Yvonne. Yes, sir. Let's let's get back to, to way before Big Brother, way before the fame. Mm. Um who was who was Yvonne? Yvonne was just a normal girl. I was um, a model before I got into the house, a model and an interior designer. I worked in the media for like a while, but I didn't like my job. And I noticed I like to take pictures and like, you can be a commercial model, you can, you know. My friend put me on some gigs and I started modeling. And then interior designing started two years ago. Yeah, so that was my life before. I got into the house and there's so many things I wanted to do but you know when you just want your market to be bigger right. yeah because I know that I was meant or I am meant for big things and I was just tired of the basic the normal or even do jobs and do slash my peer and give me I'm like no voila no problem because I just wanted to put myself out there I just wanted people to know me you know when you just want to be out there so that was pretty much my life and then interior designing came. It's a passion. It's not something I've gone to school for. It's right. just something I have a passion for, yeah. 
designing spaces and all. So that was my life pretty much. I don't want to say basic, but my life before Big Brother was very basic. And I wanted more. Mm. I think wanting more is always a good thing. Yeah. You know, we have a very short life to live. And mm -hmm. I think sometimes we people misconstrue ambition. Ambition is not a negative thing. When it becomes negative is when you don't want to do the due diligence. You yeah. could have who as well not auditioned. There are several ways to get to fame. You mm -hmm. could have decided to, you know, go through all the ways, but you, you did the due diligence, you auditioned and you got into the house. Yeah, five times. Five times? Mm -hmm. That's quite a lot. That's a lot. Why did you keep coming back? Because I knew I was meant for it. You know when something tells you that you should, I, you know the funny thing, I used to watch Big Brother with my mom, like 2006. I was still in high school. <laughs> you know when you peep just to watch the show, I used to, I loved the show. Mm. So I'm like, okay, I know that I want to be on the show one day. At first, I wanted to be on the show because, you know, you want to be rich and famous. But when I got in, I'm like, okay, even you can be more. There are right. so many things you can yeah, take out of the show. Mm. So tell me yeah. about your family. You just mentioned your mom. Yeah, I'm a preacher's daughter. Hallelujah. Yeah. Proudly. Yeah, I'm from a family of six inclusive of my parents yeah um i have two brothers and a sister so my brothers are twins i'm the last i don't know if it's obvious but i'm the last one <laughs> oh okay we're, we're black friday children oh yeah do so you know what black friday means no i mean born three children get one free we're the free ones okay yes i'm the jara <laughs> i'm the addition right. you guess so yeah i grew up in a normal home um, I grew up, my nuclear family were very close, yeah, we're very close, like I tell my dad everything, I'm very close to my father, man is the biggest supporter, very supportive, and um, because my mom is a pastor, you know, there are certain things that you can't tell our boy issues, but my dad is like really cool, of course, so, yeah. Did you ever get into any sort of confrontation with your mother at some point? Yes, yeah, so when they expelled me from school. <laughs> they expelled you from school? Yes. What did you do? <laughs> Stay for another day. <laughs> I was involved in a fight. It was a messy situation. And I was in my third year. It's not like it was academic issues. So you can imagine that kind of clumsy stupid thing i'll get you kicked out of school and my mom was so mad at me and then she's like you're, you're you've joined bad gang you have friends that it was crazy mm. did she ground you to the church like you have to be coming to church i did deliverance now wonderful <laughs> <laughs> i did deliverance because she thought something was wrong with me oh yeah i did deliverance wow yeah just my dad understood. You know, lion on the bone goods. He knew that. He was like, what's your plan? I'm like, I want to go back to school. Right. Yeah, he's like, okay. So I had to like write jam. Because I was rusticated. So you have to like start all over. I was in my third year. I had to start all over again. So I had to register for jam. Buy, yeah, so buy the syllabus so that I can buy the books that. And I just needed to prove to them that I can do it. I might be you know, right. but I can do it. And I really wanted, you know, education. I had the choice to buy results if I wanted to, but I really wanted to go to school. I wanted to have the experience, yeah. Wow, oh, so at the moment you were expelled, mm. um, you had to start all over again. Um, yeah. How did that affect you sort of mentally? What, were you, what was going on through your, your mind? Because then, I mean, it technically meant that you by the time you got into year one, your mates had my graduated. My mates had graduated, yes, no. My mates had graduated. I was sad, I was depressed. It's so bad that the next school I got to, I couldn't like really bond with people because I'm like, you know why you're here. Just let your four years be four years and leave. So I couldn't bond because I felt like I was the mama of the class. You know what? Because I was older, like I was like three, four years older than the people in my class. So it wasn't easy for me to, you know, really bond with them so it was very depressing and it wasn't easy i think it was in my third year my final year that i started bonding with my classmates 
Like I won't be proud. I'm like, I'm not proud. This is my situation. Wow, so you don't even look like what you've been through. That is even, that's not even the most thing that I've been through. But I'm just happy that all these experiences have not like changed me because I've been through it. So which would you say is the lowest moment of your life? Hmm. Was it 2016? There was a particular year. It was 2016. 2016, I was still in school. So I had this guy I was dating. Hmm. I had this guy I was dating and he lived in Abuja. So I used to like fly when I'm not like doing anything serious in school. I just go to Abuja and all. So long story short, there was a fight that made me, because we used to live together. So I went back to my house, and the day I went back to my house, I was robbed. It was a crazy situation, so I blamed that whole thing on him, because a lot of things actually did happen. So it just made me, you know when you're like, ah, oh, story for another day, but yeah, that robbery actually, it almost ruined my life, yeah. You almost ruined my life and we move. It happened, it happened. Okay. It's okay. Um, <laughs> I can tell that you're sort of filtering the details, which is okay. Because at the end of the day, um, as much as I would really love this to just really be a private, non disclosure therapy session mm. um, this is gonna be going out so I can respect the fact that there are certain details that don't have to go out so we're gonna just pause it there and uh, I wouldn't push further because I can still tell that there's quite a lot to it you know and sometimes we sometimes we just get our we just feel way better when we discuss the details mm. but for the purpose of we know how things can be misconstrued out. Let's, yeah. let's just leave it here and um, let's move on. Is there another thing you'd like to talk about? No, that's it. <laughs> you sure? That's it. Okay. Well, I'm sure this question you've heard a billion times since you got out. What next? What next? Yeah. No pressure. Whatever you decide to do will support you. If you like to say some of those things, that's fine. But if you decide to sell to speak, who will support you? <laughs> Decide to say, okay, well, what I want to be doing. I want to say, hey, could you support, <laughs> support. You. Um, But yeah, um, no pressure. Um, whatever it is that your next plans are, we'll work there to support you. But if you if you want to say it out and manifest it. I always manifest it though. Go ahead. So yeah, before going in, I was doing interior designing and I would really want to continue that but on a bigger scale. Mm. Yeah. So, I'm also, I'm also open to like other opportunities that will come. Right. Um, more modeling gigs, maybe acting. I'm not sure I'll do so bad. Acting, I'm sure I'll be a good actor. Acting, then maybe a podcast. I want to own something like this where I have to talk to people. It's hard for me to get vulnerable, but people get vulnerable with me. Mm, we could tell. <laughs> so yeah maybe have a podcast where you know i have people who come talk to me and share whatever life you know experiences that they may have right yeah okay. well for me number one is business mm -hmm. and every other thing follows that's it the, yeah the, the, the paper is very important that money that money is very important mm -hmm. i thought i was broke before i got it so right now right right all right. I mean, the video has a 17 track album, and definitely who shoots a couple um, of videos. We need to. We need to call him. <laughs> <laughs> so we just come and say, "You want offer? I beg, I need you for my video." <laughs> too late. Too late. So it will happen. It will happen. <laughs> All the best. I'm always here to Thank support you. you Whatever it is, when you start much. your new podcasts, count yeah. me in as a guest. You know. You better come but, through. <laughs> Podcast is a new rave, so better mm. cash out and you have the numbers. So, thank you. And podcast can be the business as well. I'm not even looking at it from a business aspect. You should. Really? 
Okay. You should. Because it uh, just makes things better when you always think of the business angle. Mm. It makes you more committed. It makes the team more committed because it's a matter of, okay, yeah. we're spending this X amount of Naira. Mm. How do we make profits after spending X amount of Naira? Yeah. Equipment, all of that, producing, getting the hiring staff. It just has to be a business for it to stay long and for yeah. it to thrive. Okay. Yeah. So you said you were a comedian. So how did this like start? Oh, nice. You flipped the switch now. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I just want to know. Right. Because, so like, you this, know, it's, it's two parallel things, right? Like, so I'm the last born of my family. Okay. Um, my father would always say that I was way wiser than my age. So there was a time my father and my mom, they were really fighting. They were mm. shouting at each other. And I told both of them to shut up. I was seven. And I told them to sit down. And I asked my father what happened. My father told me what happened. I asked my mother what happened. My mother told me what happened. And I preferred the solution. Did they give you like full details? It was just that they you know they are talking to a seven year old, so yeah. I think they told you like everything you needed to know. It, of course they might not have explained it to like In the nitty gritty, but like mm. My father, I called my father to order, I called my mother to order, and I was able to settle the fight. And ever since then, it has just been a thing for the family. So everybody confides. I'm like the family secret bearer. Oh. So there are things I know that my father has confided in me that nobody else knows. There are things that my mother has told me that nobody else knows. My oh. siblings, so I literally have everybody's secrets. Like I'm the secret bearer. And then it now started with my friends as well. Mm. You know, so I've always had a thing for listening to people. You know, mm. I... I I generally just empathize as a human being, mm. you know, comedy is a career, you know, TV and all of the things I do is just a career. Um, I'm passionate about it as well, but I'm saying fundamentally when, it, when the chips are down, I'm not a yeah. funny guy when I'm alone with you, like okay. when you're telling me something serious, I mm. don't try to crack jokes out of it. No, yeah. I just genuinely empathize with what you're feeling. And I genuinely try to find a way to make you better. And I've noticed, even with a lot of people, sometimes it's not even telling them, oh, it's going to be okay. Mm. Sometimes it could be people sheer just silence. Need someone to listen to them. It could just be just listen. For yeah. the one hour the person is talking, listen. just listen. That's what they need at that moment. Mm. And the moment they keep verbalizing, the verb there's a psychology that happens that they start getting better. The, m the more they verbalize, they just start getting better. You be, and then all of a sudden you've not even said anything I like oh I feel so good thank you so much mm -hmm. they're thanking you for keeping silence so I think we all should all learn how to keep silent sometimes because yes, listening is, 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 is good alright yeah. thank you for having me on your show <laughs> do you want to wrap up <laughs> hi my name is Yvonne Godsville your favorite interior designer and I just finished my sessions with Hero and it was super amazing. I mean, I got to you know, have a little chat and express a little thing to him and it feels so good to be here. And to my fans, thank you so much. And you can reach me on my social media platforms, Yvonne.Godswill on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook. Thank you so much, bye.